Hey guys, it's me, the Bombay Chef Varun Inamdar, and welcome to Get Curried. Well, today's recipe, you can eat it as a breakfast, you can make a lunch out of it, or a dinner out of it. It's a very quick, simple, and easy recipe. A combination of two things, a paratha and the quintessential breakfast, anda. I'm making egg paratha. Let's begin. Let's begin with the recipe for the dough. Now, this is a very typical paratha or a roti dough. Of course, by all means, you can also uh, use a leftover dough, which could be atta, maida, anything. Let's add in some salt. Now, you can very well flavor the dough with uh, carom seeds, which are ajwain or jeera, cumin seeds, um, maybe a little chili powder, anything that you think uh, will personalize your dough and flavor. Please go ahead with it. I like it nice and plain, so I'm sticking to this. Uh, you can also add in some uh, dhania powder or some crushed dhania seeds. That would also go very well. Let's make a nice pliable dough with water. Just ensure that all the water is not added at uh, the same time because you do not want to mess up the dough recipe. Of course, if you're used to making this, you know what I'm talking exactly. But if you are doing this for the first time, add little, little at a time and ensure that the dough is nice and soft. The dough has become nice and soft. Again, the amount of water that would go in this recipe would uh, vary from uh, one third cup to one fourth a cup for one cup of atta. I'm just adding like a tablespoon of vegetable oil and that will make this dough nice and elastic. It's important to add oil towards the end and not towards the beginning because again you're not looking at a short crust like generally how we make for biscuits or cookies. You're making a very typical roti paratha dough. Let's bring all of this together. That's how the dough should look. Uh, let it rest for somewhere around 15 minutes so that the gluten kind of develops in the dough and then we move forward. While the dough is resting, let us quickly make an egg mix. Now this is going to be a raw mix. We're not going to cook this. We're of course going to cook this later. I'm adding in some coriander leaves. To this, I'm going to add in chopped tomatoes. Again, like I said earlier, you can personalize this dish completely. You can bring in some Mexican flavors. You can bring in some Italian flavors. Just add in some oregano, chili flakes, salt, pepper. That makes it very close to replicating an Italian pizza. You can of course add in some chili sauce of different kinds. Personalize it basically. Let's add in some salt. What I've added so far is coriander, chilies, red onions, tomatoes and salt. Very, very, very simple. Let's mix all of this together. And this is your absolute basic egg omelette mixture, like a masala omelette that you would eat in restaurants and hotels for breakfast or even at home for that matter. Now again to this, you can also add in some chopped spinach, you can add in some chopped mushrooms, cheese if you like, make it personal. Let's keep this aside. The dough has rested wonderfully well. If you see, it's become a little more pliable, a little softer, and that's what we are looking at. Let's divide this into orange sized balls. So you can divide this either into two or three, depending on the size that you're looking at. And let's dab this in a little bit of wheat flour. Now, I get asked a lot of these questions about what refined flour is. Now, refined flour is maida and wheat flour is whole wheat flour or gehu kata. So, remember that in this recipe, I've used gehu kata. I've rolled it to the size of the board. Now, if you see the thickness, it is roughly like, say, a millimeter. And that's just about perfect. We just go and add in a little bit more of the flour and to this I'm going to add in a teaspoon of oil. Now this is a very important step, do not miss this because this is what will help in opening up the flake. Let's rub this nicely and evenly. Ensure that it goes right up to the sides. And the next step is to fold this half, press it 
and fold it into a quarter. That's done and ready. Let me lift this and show you. See, that's how the pockets would now look. The next step is to dredge a little bit of flour again because we're going to roll this like a chapati, like a paratha literally, if I may say so. Now, there are two, three ways of rolling this. You can either form it into a triangle or you can roll it from year and year and make it into a round. That's a complete personal choice. That's not going to change the taste of the, of the recipe. But of course, the appearance completely changes. I'm keeping it or I'm rather retaining the triangle for which I'm pulling it from here and then pushing it away from me so that this kind of opens up like so. Now, just a little more on this side and this side. A little more flour because you don't want this to tear or you don't want this to kind of rupture because the, you're going to create a pocket right here. It's going to open up. Be gentle towards the edges and the ends. But also ensure that it becomes even. It shouldn't be like a stodgy dough on one side and thin on the other side because you want it to be nice and even. With this, your paratha is literally rolled and ready. Now, that's how it looks at this stage. You'll wonder where's the egg. The egg will come in a little while. Let's cook this. Let this open up lightly. Because of the oil and the flour, this entire pocket is going to open up and that's where we're going to fill it. But we're going to fill it on the tawa itself. Let's move on to the tawa. The tawa has heated up. Let's transfer this on a tawa. And we need to cook this for somewhere around 30 to 40 seconds on low to medium flame. You'll start seeing a little bubbles popping in here and there. So we'll wait for that. Once you start seeing these bubbles that are kind of rising and popping, we gently flip this on the other side. Allow this to cook for just like 10 seconds on the bottom. And we add in a teaspoon of oil. Remember this is a paratha, you can of course make this in ghee or butter, that's a complete personal choice. On the other side I'm not adding anything because I have one teaspoon on the other side. So I'm just going to manage in that to begin with. Again, it's going to be a little loaded on fat because again the egg needs to be cooked. I'll soon show you how, you just press it so that it cooks on all the sides. And if you see this pocket has opened up wonderfully well and that's where the egg mixture is going to go. I'm going to open the pocket and add in a ladle of this mixture and try to push it right within. Let's add in another pocket full. It's going to flow out but that's completely fine. We can push it in again later. Just lightly rest this on top of it and allow this to cook on low flame till it kind of puffs up lightly the egg starts cooking once it begins to cook we'll push in the the egg that is kind of flown out we'll push it back within so that it envelopes of course a little will flow here a little will settle but that's completely fine that's the magic and beauty of making something artisanal making something at home something which is uh, made with love literally I'm going to lift this up and envelope it like this just push it back within and cover it press it do not press it too hard because you don't want the other bit to start flowing out but what's important is that the egg should go right till the center and to the corners which is very important now the idea of this recipe is to cook it on low so that um, it just kind of puffs up, swells up and that's what we're looking at. If you hasten this process, then the egg will start leaching out from the sides and it keeps getting complex and complex, so remember that. Once you see that the color kind of changes, becomes a little lighter, I'm going to add in a teaspoon more of oil. Smear it around. By this time, the bottom would have become nice, crisp and golden brown. Let's give this a flip, 
should be nice crisp golden brown like this this for you ladies and gentlemen is egg paratha or anda paratha and this goes amazingly well with tomato ketchup well that's one of my favorite uh, combinations with this but otherwise this by itself is also magical let me cut this and show you how the omelette is looking well stuffed beautifully well sandwiched when i say the recipe is quick simple and easy i absolutely mean it this was anda paratha for you or egg paratha for you and like i said you can personalize it you can give it a mexican flavor an italian flavor a chinese flavor a japanese flavor or make it absolutely indian and desi and for more such recipes stay tuned